In-app messaging is the most powerful way to communicate with your users and to drive onboarding and adoption. But that only works if they're in your app in the first place. Hi everyone, my name is Sam and I am a senior product designer here at AppQs. And today I'm gonna to show you how to get inactive users back into your app and through your onboarding process. So for today's tutorial, I've got an AppQs checklist published in my app. And my onboarding goal is to get users to complete the checklist because if they do, they'll be all set to get value out of my product. So I'm gonna create an email workflow that is driven by what my users do or don't do in my app. So the first step is identifying the right audience. I wanna enroll new users in my workflow. These are users who have signed up in the last 30 days. These are folks who may still be evaluating if the product is right for them. So I wanna keep that momentum up. Now, the goal for this workflow is to get them to finish all the tasks in that checklist. So I've got a goal set up that looks for that checklist to have been completed. If they complete this checklist at any point, they'll stop receiving messages from the workflow and they'll be considered completed. And in the spirit of momentum, I'm going to send them their first email after one day. My onboarding checklist isn't very long. There's a very good chance that they'll be able to get through it on day one. But if they don't, I want to make sure that they come back and finish it as soon as possible. So I'll add a time delay here for one day. And you may want to adjust this depending on how complex your onboarding process is. But it's important not to let their enthusiasm slip away on you. So I'm going to add an email step in here and I'll load in my company's email template and write an appropriate follow up email, encouraging my customers to log back in and let them know the value that they'll get once they finish onboarding. If you're using flows to onboard your users rather than checklists, you can actually link directly to an in app flow using the button block. But in my case, I'll just be linking to my web app. Then I'll add another time delay here. And it's worth repeating if they complete my workflow at any point, they'll stop getting messages from it. Now this time delay will be three days so that they don't feel like I'm spamming them with reminders. Again, you can go a little longer if your onboarding process is maybe a little bit more complex. And to top it all off, I'll add another follow up email again, communicating the value of getting through the onboarding process, but in different words this time. And after I publish that, I can monitor the performance of my workflow. I can see how many people are engaging with my email and I can make tweaks and adjustments to my email as I need to. And if I really wanted to, I could even A-B test multiple emails with our branching feature and the audience randomizer user property. So I hope this helps. And if there's another tutorial that you'd like to see, leave me a comment down below and stay tuned for more great product adoption content from AppQs.